The race for the speakership position of the 10th House of Representatives has taken a new turn. Members of the opposition caucus of the House have stepped up their plan to upstage the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, by fielding a candidate for the position of speaker. The caucus, under the ages of greater majority, resolved to field candidates for the positions of the speaker and the deputy speaker of the 10th National Assembly. The membership of the caucus is drawn from main opposition parties like the People's Democratic Party, Social Democratic Party, New Nigerian People's Party, Young People's Party, YPP, All Progressive, Grand Alliance, ABGA, and the Labour Party. Let's share the story by TVC News, Joke Adisa. With more than 180 members in their kitty, the seven political parties making up the opposition in the next house say they are united for their common good and the good of the nation. The minority reps elect have christened themselves the greater majority and say all they seek is the unification of Nigeria along ethno religious lines. We are committed to this unity to this progress, to this understanding that we shall work together to deliver to Nigerians the dividends of democracy. We are here to support this initiative. We are here to support the agenda. We are here to support the ideology of this uh, group. After an extensive meeting of over three hours, the legislators elect set up a committee to scout for credible and acceptable candidates that will vie for the speakership and deputy speakership seats. In another development, House leader Alazana Dodogua is now officially in the race to succeed Femi Bajabia Miller as speaker at a well attended news conference in Abuja. The legislator said he has paid his dues and it is time to reward his stewardship. We will facilitate the development and implementation of citizen centered collaboration, collaborative interface with other state and non-state actors on matters relating to the legislature. We will also provide strategic leadership for the development of the medium-term plan of parliament. The only female aspirant in the speakership race, however, caused a stay with her parents at the Dogua declaration, but she says she does not do politics of bitterness. I had to come and give him my support, and that's what a mother would do. And this will show Nigerians that I'm not just in the contest because I'm desperate. I am in it because I understand the diversity and the need for inclusivity. The race to the exalted state of Mr. Speaker promises to be an interesting one with the array of members elect that have signified interest. More interesting is the resolve of the minority caucus to partake in the exercise. But how well the aspiration of those high in the seat is managed will certainly go a long way to set an agenda for the 10th House of Representatives. Joke Edsa, TVC News, Abuja. Go. Immediately uh, they finished the runoff elections uh, that, uh, that happened mid March. I Immediately I saw that statistics, I knew that, look, the All Progressive Congress not able to have a convincing yeah, majority, yeah, majority in the House of Representatives might pose a, a big problem. If you look at the statistics for the Senate, they have like yeah. a comfortable lead. Yes, exactly. But for the House of Representatives, that's why the opposition within the House of Representatives are tagging, themselves. they've tagged themselves that yeah, uh, greater, greater majority. majority. Definitely, they have the majority. Mm -hmm. If with out of 360, with over 180 lawmakers, I'm sure my producer will be able to get down the breakdown so that we well, can get this thing. Yeah, yeah, but I even have the breakdown. APC has 178 seats, PDP has about 118, Labour Party 30, uh, 35, NNPP 19, Afghan 5. SZP and ADC2, and there are two seats. I think there are two seats that are uh, still in contention, or one seat that is still in contention, either in Ondo or Akwai Bump. You know, they are still pending. So if you look at it, calling themselves greater majority is good to be ambitious. 
But when once it comes to politics, politics is a um, is a game of chess. There, there will be some people who will, will, will be with you, even deep down within them, some of them that are there. They know what they are looking for, are you? They are calling themselves greater majority. When it comes to real politicking, majority will turn to minority. In fact, they will even turn to members when it comes to real politicking. We are already seeing it already. There will be some people who will say, yes, we are with you, we are with you. But when the people who are talking politics are not, they are telling you good morning, but at night they know where they will go to, you won't be there. So I just pity those who are just entering into the house newly. They are moving them into the greater, greater majority now. But as time goes on, by the time it gets to June 10, when they, when they will start voting, that's when they will now know that, ah, this thing that I've entered, <laughs> this ship is not the kind of ship that I was thinking of. Even, the, even those who are in the parties that are, are calling themselves Puritans, they will see that uh, politics is different from what they are saying, telling people outside. Honestly, Nigerian politics is different. It's not about what we are talking about, you know. Those who are championing the greater majority are those who are um, they've been in the house for a very long time. So the only thing they need is try and bring other people. But I, I can tell you, members of this greater majority, I can tell you some, as I'm seeing the numbers, I can tell you that there are some people in PDP who, when the chips are down, they will vote for APC. There are some people in NMPP they would have also vote for APC. There are some people in APGA, SZP, or even ADC, that will still vote. All the APC needs to do is to make sure that they have a credible um, candidate as a speaker. I've been hearing about zoning, zoning, zoning. The only undoing for APC will be if they zone wrongly or bring a, a, a speaker or a personnel that people might not appeal to, and then they will begin to have problems. But for the, major, the greater majority to say that they want to bring the speaker and then bring the, uh, bring, uh, bring the deputy speaker. It will be very difficult, Ayo. Okay, we've seen this before, that the opposition, you know, rallying together and upstaging the ruling party. Do you see this happening in the 10th Assembly? It may happen. Anything can happen in politics. But what is going to happen is that this very 10th House of Representatives will be different from what we've had since 1999. And that is because for the first time, the minority party is going to be the majority party in the House of Representatives. And you can now ask yourself, what are the, what are the bargains? One, the minority party is going to have a more powerful bargaining power at every given opportunity in the House. Two, they are going to determine to a large extent who becomes the speaker of the House, unlike before. Where the ruling party can say, oh, do you decide whether, we, you or whether so you agree you or not? The APC might not be able to hold the Yes, number. so they will, yes. Even when you say the APC, as well, not every member of that APC will vote for an APC candidate. Forget it. And, and that's what you, you, you understand? They also have their own. Oh, yes. They have their own that's interest. I'm telling you that even the greater that is, majority, yes. not everybody that, that is, is that there is there. that will so, also vote for them. What is going to be is, is that for the first time, you are going to have a situation where the opposition party's members are going to have a larger say. We also have a say mm -hmm. on who becomes. You might not be able to have a... There are about 180 there about, which means that it, there are three, it's a 360 yes. member uh, uh, um, house. Mm -hmm. um, maybe our producer will put the, um, this thing on the screen. It's supposed to be... The House of Representatives is made of 360, 360. members. So they in, the, in, the, in the Senate, is 109. So anybody that has 181 is in the majority. It might, no matter how minute it is, understand? So those are the situation. Then the, also, the, the issue there is also that anybody who also, when the, even the House now finally reconvened, which is where I'm going to, mm. when there are going to be issues, there are going to be bills, there are going to be motions and the rest of them. The, before where the um, uh, uh, ruling party will think, oh, we have the majority, we are going to reload this. If and they force the minority uh, that, uh, to just keep quiet, or force them to walk away, which they normally do most of the time, mm -hmm. when they couldn't have, they won't be having their way again. 
if members of the opposition decide to be attending preliminaries every time, okay. they are in the majority. You understand what I mean? So it is going to be a very, very wonderful thing. But let's see how it's going to be. It depends on, and I agree with Asuko, it depends on APC, how he plays his game. Mm -hmm. Now, as as I, with, with the, ent with the ent um, entry of uh, Adodogua, the majority mm -hmm. leader to the race of the House of Representatives, you saw the drama that played out in River State yesterday, mm -hmm. and you saw the body language. Mm -hmm. And looking at it, the way, do you see the House of Rep going the same way the Senate might have gone? Because from what I read yesterday, I don't think, they, it's like no, a, they, a I, think, deal. I think for the Senate, you know, they, they will find a way to manage the situation in the Senate. The House of Rep is where there will be a little bit of challenge. And that is why I'm saying that the APC has to play its cards very well in terms of who they want to bring out as a candidate, and the zone that that person will be coming from. Because right now, if from what we saw yesterday, if you notice, we saw a south-south and a north-west. Okay? And then, Dogua is from the northwest. So, APC has to sit down to look at it. Every, Nigerians want a piece of every Nigerian region. Inclusivity. They want to be carried along one way or the other, okay? So, and nobody wants to be left behind. So you can't say, oh, because I gave the majority, whatever, I've been votes, then I have to always be, be at the top. No, other zones also have to be part of it. So they'll, they'll be looking at, APC has to sit down. They said they don't, I've not heard them talk saying anything about zoning, but they can do that in their little corner and then decide. Everybody that wants to be speaker, everybody that wants to be um, senior president, Ayo, mm. they are looking for something. So it's just for them to sit down and begin to negotiate and make sure that there's no crisis. Because just like ZK said, it would be very dangerous for the greater majority to take the house, particularly in the government of Ashwa Jubal Because they wouldn't want to go to what happened during Buhari's time, where they had a, an opposition, or even a member of their party who was an opposition. You know? so, and we don't want anything that will stall governance. We want something that at least there will be debates, people will be able to analyze. I'll be, I'll let, let people be at home to know what, why the House of Rep or who or the Senate is trying to stop a particular bill or a particular uh, policy from you know, uh, taking shape, you know. So I want that kind of a thing, not um, uh, what we want to see at, at this period. Well, again, when you look at the configuration of the Knight Assembly and both the Senate and the House of Representatives and they are winding down now, will you say, can you give them a pass back for what they've done so far? Um, to a large extent, are we... The Speaker of the House. Let's take it individually. Yeah. yeah. I'm not. Let me before I take the House. The Speaker of the House, Femi Bajabia Miller, has done well. Very well. Whenever I say it, people say, "Oh, it's again." It's because he's an Igbobian like you. It's not because he's an Igbobian. <laughs> he has nothing to do with Igbobi College. His performance has been. Good. You, you've seen even the issue of the resident doctors. Exactly. The way he's in. Pick up any particular issue of national interest. Mm -hmm that you not see Femi Bajabi Amela being part of it. Is it diaspora issues? Is it education? Is it labor? Is it education? Name it. He, as an individual, has been uh, exemplary. Mm -hmm. And if not for our kind of zoning and non-zoning systems, it's, it's someone like him, is, so uh, is somebody that's uh, someone that I would just equate to like someone like Pelosi yes. in the US. To just stay. Yes, to stay. I'm yes. talking on personally. Yes. Mm -hmm. My personal opinion. Because it has gone beyond just zoning for me. Competence must come to the table. Mm -hmm. If we must get it right. Mm. So I, I don't see him returning the seat or speaking. I don't know. He's not so he, he, he can't even buy. It's the same state, he's from the same state with, with the, the president. president. So definitely he's a bet. He has done excellently well. Then when you come to the house, the way a man, you know, the, the house of assembly, uh, the house of is always the radical house. Mm -hmm. 
of the two chambers. Mm. We take the Senate as a much more matured, robust. Yeah. So, but those members of the they are made of young intellectuals with serious capacity and capability to be able to perform. And that Rational is why you people. see that is why no you see them on issues of national interest. They are always bigger. so. I would say yes, relatively because of the kind of leadership they have. Fine. I may not say same of the Senate. The Senate also did well to a large extent, but I will not say same. Because with vigor with which the House of Representatives, that was not totally matched with this. But when you put the two together, you can say, well, some of the laws that were passed, because they are, let us look at it, they are prim the primary responsibility of the National Assembly and Legislature is to pass law. That is what you use to be able to engage them. Mm -hmm. If you look at some of the laws they passed, just recently the president they passed law, and the president signed about 19 of it out of about 30 something. Good enough, fine. That, that might not be all. But on issues of national interest, I will see the Senate a, a bit weakened. And most especially is the acronym of the stamping everything, everything that, the that the president that is a group. That is not legislation. That is not legislation. Because theirs is to be able to place some kind of oversight on the executive. Yes, we have a, a separation of power. But the duty of the a, a legislature, to, apart from lawmaking, is to be an oversight. Have they been able to perform their primary responsibility to me to a large extent? They were not able to do that. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Because we, we just, uh, for the Senate, we just noticed that they turned themselves into a rubber stamp. You know, everything that the president thinks there. We are not talking about party this time. At least let's have a debate. Let's see that intensity of debate you know, in the Senate, whereby people will now know that, okay, well, this, not that the Senate president or the, Senate, the senators there are against the government, but at least why they should debate why those policies, uh, why the president actually want those policies in place. You know? All right.